Hello, Hi, everybody. Hello. Hello. Good to see you all back. And what nice to see that we have a fully gender balanced uh, session today. So that's that's uh, great. Caroline, thank you for organizing and putting this session together. Um, we are going to talk about alternative payments today. It's a very wide subject. And uh, we have some interesting speakers lined up for all of you. We're going to start with uh, Lotte de Meulener, but I will first introduce the other speakers too. Uh, Nadege Focard from Moniz. Uh, there's a lot of radio uh, spots going for Moniz on, uh, that I've been hearing the last few days. So that's also mm -hmm. part of your department. Uh, mm -hmm. We have uh, Robert Mas from Loyal Tech who will explain. And he's been in the media a lot with uh, some uh, some recent news that he will share with us. And we have uh, Bernard Noël de Berlin from Join uh, who will explain what, what Join does. And so without uh, further ado, I would say uh, Lotta de Melonnet, uh, Bank Contact PayConnect doesn't need a lot of introduction, but you did prepare some slides for us. So let's start talking about alternative payment methods. Okay. And I see that you're trying to share your screen, your presentation. So while you do that, I will ask our, our viewers that on the right side, there is a chat possibility. Our speakers are always being introduced there. So myself, I'm Tom Van Echt. I'm one of the, the board members of FinTech Belgium. I run a FinTech called data.be. Uh, and uh, I can say all that to win some time to get your slides up there. Uh, <laughs> yes, so I am almost there. Fine, very good. We will we will share your LinkedIn profile too, so people that want to reach out to you afterwards they can do that. I would like to ask the audience to join us in the chats. You can ask questions in the question tab or respond to our polls. We have a few nice questions lined up for you that we will share later during the session. So, go ahead, Bank Contact PayConnect. Explain us a little bit about the company and uh, how that uh, came together. Okay, thank you very much, Toon, for the introduction. And thank you also for the invitation to come on stage today. Um, I would like to elaborate today on the societal role of local digital payment methods and how we've, um, we've worked on uh, informing both the consumers and merchants on the local payment methods that we offer within Bank Contact Bitcoin Company and also uh, linked to the new challenges uh, that COVID-19 brought us. So um, when COVID-19 kicked in, uh, at, at, uh, I think it was mid-March somewhere, we sat around the table and we reflected then on how can uh, mobile and card payments help consumers and merchants to, to overcome those new limitations and, and challenges, challenges that were brought to the table. So within my contact pick on a company, we offer on the one hand uh, the possibility to the consumers to perform card payments with the bank contact card. You can use your bank contact card to, to pay in a shop or online. Um, and on the other hand, we offer the possibility to pay mobile with the uh, PayConnect by Bank Contact app. So for the Bank Contact card, um, discussions were started very early uh, at the beginning of uh, the COVID-19 period on, OK, how can we can we help by easing, by uh, making it more easy to pay contactlessly? Um, and as you all know, probably the, the limits to perform contactless payments without a PIN code were raised uh, mid-April from 25 to 50 euros. So it means that as a consumer, I don't have to put in, uh, introduce my PIN code for contactless bank contact payments um, up to a limit of uh, 50 euro per transactions. It means that you really reduce the risk of transferring the, the virus via uh, the PIN pad or um, another uh, part of, of the payment term plan. Uh, it was a decision that was made together with the whole financial sector and it was welcomed very, uh, very good and um, uh, also on the request of both merchants and consumers to raise those limits. So that's a really an important measure that um, that eased and that, uh, yeah, that eased the card payments on sich in the stores. On the other hand, we have the Begoning My One Contact app. So the Begoning by One Contact app, it's, um, it's a unique app in Belgium. It's uh, an app that is supported by 20 Belgian banks. So it's basically all the, the Belgian banks um, that are today uh, on the Belgian landscape offering e-commerce to their, to their clients. And it's one app um, where you can pay with both at merchants 
offering Payconic as a mobile payment method and uh, bank contact as a mobile payment method. You can use it in store, scanning a QR code in the store, or you can use it online, also scanning in the QR code to perform your payment or via the merchant's app itself, that it's just an app-to-app -app payment. Um, and you can also use it to pay your friends, so to perform peer-to-peer -peer payments, either by scanning a QR code or also by um, choosing their contacts in the contact list um, of the app. Today, I would like to elaborate more on um, the way we've communicated those pa these past months uh, on mobile payments with the Payconic by One Contact app, and also um, both to the consumer and to the merchant environment. Um, the approach we took towards local businesses is um, really to be there uh, for them in an informative way uh, to support our partners and also to support all the local initiatives that were created. Uh, we've seen that Belgium is a very uh, generous and very um, supportive community. Uh, when you look at all the initiatives that were launched in the water and gas sector, also um, very a lot of good causes were launched as well during uh, COVID-19. So. Um, with regard to the, the more traditional businesses, uh, we, we informed all kinds of merchants on, okay, how can you use your current payment method? Uh, so the payment method that you have today, how you can you use it in a different setting? Uh, so you don't have to do any extra um, connections. You don't have to do any extra effort. You can just, for example, the Morica had to close. They could start delivery with the payment method that they have today already. Um, we uh, also focused on some specific sectors like the medical sector or uh, Morica, as I mentioned already, to help them overcome um, those challenges that were brought and to help offer safe um, hygienic payments uh, in their businesses. Um, we also collaborated with uh, a lot of partners such as uh, Deliveroo, where we gave also more information on how they can actually add a, a layer of trust towards their uh, consumers by communicating on safe payments with bank contact or with the Big Money by Bank Contact app. And um, a track we started already last year eh, to support local initiatives. Um, we also continued and, and put some more efforts uh, in that part, uh, towards that part of local businesses. So last year we launched Scan for Change. Scan for Change was an action that um, introduced mobile payments within the charity. Uh, atmosphere so within charity organizations we uh, collaborated with 20 charities last year already and we also help them now during COVID-19 period uh, to to get fundraising in a mobile way because you cannot go and you, you, you can't you couldn't go on the street or organize the festivities to with a lot of people together and um, Therefore, the mobile donating, accepting donation in a mobile way is also a solution to continue accepting donations because um, that's really important for the charities, their actions they do, and also the continuity of their business. Um, we launched a platform, Local C'est Génial. Uh, the Local C'est Génial regrouped actually all kinds of local initiatives where you could use mobile payments. So it was really an, an informative platform and a gateway to all those different initiatives in Belgium. And um, it had a lot of success. We also uh, collaborated with Trooper. Uh, Trooper is um, an organization that is there for our scouts, our Houston, our um, all kinds of um, yeah football clubs, uh, rugby clubs, uh, whatever you can name it. Uh, we launched the online, the first online benefit action, um, where we also helped all those organizations on okay, how can I accept uh, mobile payments in my current organization, and how can I continue to collect money so that my uh, scouts group or rugby, rugby club can go on holiday or can do their camp during the summer. On top of that, we also offered all transactions, transactions for free in March and April to give that extra 
breathing space, let's say, for the smaller merchants, which are typically iconic merchants um, today. The press communication that we did had a national coverage uh, on the free Payconic transactions. We created POS material. Uh, you can see the sticker there. Merci om aan onze veiligheid te denken. Alors, merci de penser à notre sécurité. And where we merchants of, we offered the material towards the merchants, uh, especially in this period where shops are opening again, to inform their clients on. Um, Please stay mobile in the shop and think about our and your uh, safety. Um, yeah, Benefit Cot, eh, the action we did with uh, with Super, eh, where we helped them really in an informative way. Okay, guys, play with Payconic. You can easily accept donations. You can easily accept uh, mobile payments, which are very secure, very safe, and um, en enable us to continue uh, collecting money. Local Cégénial, uh, one of the partners we teamed up with was the UZ Brussels Foundation. Um, there are a lot of initiatives that we supported as well in the health sector because they were our heroes and still are our heroes and they need that extra support um, also. Okay. Towards the consumer, um, we took the approach to uh in different waves so first we communicated on very stack way in the tips and tricks on how you can uh deal with how you can perform safe payments in the context of corona um this is what you, you here is an example of uh facebook communication that we did and uh, we also did it on other online channels we did a co-marketing with Deliveroo, as you see, uh, veilig besteld, veilig geleverd en veilig betaald. So uh, safely ordered, safely delivered, but also safely paid. So you pay with Pekonic by Market or your bank product card and your order is safely paid. It's a, a communication we did together with Deliveroo and um, really on demand of some of them to, to inform their, their consumers. Uh, the moment that uh, we could come out again a bit more as a consumer, we communicated in the, in the newspapers, uh, also in a very informative way again on okay, how can you safely go shopping again with the Payconing by Bank app and all the different use cases that you can you can um, use the app for. So in a shop, uh, online, peer to peer, via contact list, via a shop list in the app. So all very. Um, we really took the approach to be both the partner of, of both consumers and merchants and really informing them on safe payments and how uh, they can continue their business on the one hand and how consumers can safely pay on the other hand. And, and Lotta, can you share some numbers on, on the success of this awareness campaign? Because on the one hand, there were, the merchant had less transactions because there was, of course, some of them had to be closed. On the other hand, the ones that opened up again, did they share with you which percentage that used to be cash has gone into mobile payments and wireless, uh, touchless mobile payments? So we don't have the numbers of the merchants themselves, um, but what we see in general, uh, if you look at the numbers from uh, February compared to May, we see an increase of 55% wow. of payments that merchants that are now performed with the Big One by Bank Contact app. So there is really a change in habit. Um, it's nice to see some positive <laughs> double yeah. digit growth numbers during these gloomy times. So thanks for yes. sharing that with us. Yes, no, my pleasure. Um, and of course, uh, we we only come out of, uh, we, we're not back to normal yet. Huh? We were still, uh, the Horeca opened up now at the beginning of the week. Uh, summer will still be different um, than what we're used to. Huh? Um, but we are currently preparing also the, the summer campaign that we will launch in the beginning of, uh, of July as well. And the focus is there is, is, is stay conic eh? to, to enjoy the holidays in, in our country. And also there, we really want to be, uh, to inform, um, merchants and consumers, but we think it's time to, to open up uh a bit more the uh, yeah, to, to really embrace the pleasure that we can uh, have again uh but in a safe way as well of course 
Okay. Well, I, I can share with you that for the people who responded to the poll, so there's about 70 people uh, that have joined us for this session, and 29% uh, pay uh, contact this uh, with the bank contact, and the mobile payments with the Payconic by bank contact app was another. Uh, well, people are adding new numbers now, but so we had 58% just before the, you all started discovering the polls track is going up even. So we we you really have. These, of course, you're preaching to the converted tech because people in fintech are likely to be amongst those that have your apps installed. But it, we can see that there's already a very high take up uh, today in Belgium uh, to pay mobile. Uh, so that's, yes. uh, that's a nice, uh, nice thing that shows here. Yes, exactly. OK, thank you very much. This was your last slide also, Lotta? Yes. Yes. Great. So what we're going to do, there's, there's, we'll take one question now, but we, we're going to keep all the others for the end. If more, there, there's a question from uh, Cedric Feyans about what will be the potential impact of the request uh, to pay uh, EBA clearing on Payconic. Uh, I don't know if you want to answer that now or if you want to answer that at the very end. I'll leave can the you, choice can up to you. you. Repeat? Can you so repeat the, the question? question? Yes, I'll put it on the screen too. That way you see it. So what will be the potential impact of request to pay? which seems to be a, a EBA, so an European Banking Association clearing uh, suggestion. I, so I must be uh, honest, I do not know what uh, what the, the, the clearing uh, refers to exactly. Uh, are you familiar with it? Or you want, okay, it's... so we're going to ask Cedric to give us a little bit more background on this uh, very interesting question. And uh, we will we, that, that will give the time to Lota to look it up and ask internally. And we will go to Nadej Fokar from Moniz. Uh, next, and as said before, there's a Q&A session at the end of all the presentations. So, uh, Nadesh, tell us a little bit about Moniz, and don't forget to put your slides on there. Too. Yes. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Nadesh. I'm working at Moniz as communication mm. manager. And today, I'm going to talk about dedicated digital payments. Um, so I first start uh, with a poll, um, and I have. I need to check the poll. <laughs> Your response. So the poll we, we're know. launching it for you. Yes. So the poll. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So we'll we'll uh, we'll put it on there for you now. Um, so for all the attendees, you can go to the poll stop on the right top side. Uh, and so we have a new poll now, which is, do you receive sports yeah. and coaching no, parties from your employer? For, that's for a little bit later. If you now that's can answer, later. yeah, do, how much money does Belgium lose to other countries? We have, okay, so we have that one up there too. So indeed, those two polls. So if everybody wants to start answering them, and that gives yeah. you the opportunity to give your presentation now. So go ahead, Great. Nadesh. We'll, uh, we'll keep an but, eye on the results that are streaming. Okay, in. but I see, I see that some of you are uh, correctly. So yes, indeed, uh, each year around uh, 2.5 uh, to 3 billion euros um, leave Belgium. That's huge. Um, why? Because more and more Belgium um, Belgians shop online, and most of the e-commerce platforms uh, used used are based abroad. So um, and these uh, these billions of euros represent. Uh, represents around 10,000 jobs uh, that Belgium could recover if all these purchases uh, returned to our country. So for Belgium, it's a huge challenge, a huge challenge to recover that money mm -hmm. in our country. Um, and dedicated digital payments um, like the meal, the eco, the gift, and the sport and culture. Oh, so I have to interrupt you. You you accidentally hit the mute button. So yeah, now you're back. Fine, it's good. Yes. We unmute you. You're okay. unmuted now. <laughs> Do you hear me? Hello. Go ahead. Yes. Do you hear me? Yes, we can hear yes. you fine. Okay. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, you can continue. We hear you fine. Okay. Um. So um, these um dedicated digital payments um are part of the solution. Um, why? Because um, these advantages can be only uh, spendable in Belgium and uh, their validity is limited uh, to a certain time. So uh, it guarantees a Belgium consum consumption within a well-defined time. Um, and on top of that, uh, there are a lot of, lot of fiscal advantages for the employers to grant them and for the employees who uh, receive them. 
but that's not all. Um, Moniza is also working to having um, our solutions uh, accepted online, of course, only on uh, Belgium web shops. Um, so um, for now, uh, we offer um, direct payment uh, with Moniza um, at a number of web shops like Skipu, Localimus, um, etc. We have also a partnership uh, with Molly. Um, and with Molly, it will be uh, soon, we will be soon uh, allowed to pay with Moniza on all the Molly web shops. Okay, wow. Um, then um, one month ago, we launched also uh, the active platform, uh, which automatically takes care of everything online. But I will come back uh, on this platform a little bit later. And um, of course, there is a lot of other initiatives in the pipeline to make uh, online payments more easily. Uh, we are working also with other uh, PSP uh, like Ingen Ingenico, so um, a lot of other initiatives uh, are coming. Then when I don't you say know... PSP, that's payment service providers, right? Yes, in the, in the, yes, yes. Great. Okay. like Ingenico and, and the rest. Um, I don't know if uh, we can answer the second poll. Uh, how yes. many of you have um, sport and culture vouchers? So 75% of the respondents uh, says to ha says to has received them. Some of them are responding now. The, okay. Oh, sorry, it's the other way around. I'm sorry. No, 32% okay. is getting them and 68% is not getting them yet. Let's put it that <laughs> way. Yeah, so. <laughs> no problem. But um, for those who already, uh, already received them, uh, probably uh, you received them uh, in papers. So of course, uh, we are fully digital. So uh, we launched uh, one month ago, the new generation of uh, the sports and culture vouchers. So um, you will not receive them anymore in paper, but um, it, uh, everything happens online. So Active um, is an online booking platform uh, for sports, culture, and cultural and leisure activities. So you can um, search your activity on the platform, you can book and you can pay it online. So everything uh, happens on one platform. Um, and just out of curiosity, was the launch of the active platform impacted by the COVID? Because uh, and the sports and culture, they were closed uh, already uh, mid-March. Yes. Were you ready at that time or was it for you good that it was almost ready now and that you can launch it at a better timing? No, um, it, we were ready at a, at a good time. We work on it okay. um, since uh, past year, end of past okay. year, and um, we um, our planning was it to launch uh, in April May. So it comes on a good moment okay. after the COVID, okay. because it's also um, a way to uh, support all these um, establishments that has, has to close and now they can open so it's a way to support them also but it's a, you just said something very interesting because uh, when i look at the people during this session a lot of them work at large companies that are all trying digital transformation and we just yes. learned that you can decide on a project and work on it from the end of 2019 and launch it uh, by the summer of uh, 2020 so that's good news in the digital transformation adding a new yes. product line to your offering so congrats on that one that's uh, very inspiring <laughs> um um yes that's nice moniza is uh, still uh, Ali, we are we can do projects on a fast way so that's that's nice um so uh, uh more about the active so like i said it's an online booking platform uh but it also offers um attractive um prices so uh, every act, act uh, activity you find it it has discounts from discounts from 10 to 30 percent um okay. and an, an employer can grant a uh, hundred euro of active budget to an employee each year um so it, it's a budget uh, they can spend uh, for activities but of course uh when um they used their budget they still can use the platform because um they can pay with other uh, payment methods like uh, 
Mastercard, Bank Contact, etc. So they can still use uh, the platform. So that's interesting. And there are more than uh, 5,000 activities uh, all around the country. Voilà, that was about active. And uh, finally, I, I would like to talk um, about um, the collaboration um, we have with some partners in the payment industry. Um, Peconic and John, uh, of course, who are uh, participating at this it's session. Very, very nice to put them on there. They joined yes. us for this session too. So it's <laughs> very co nice coincidence that you can put them in the spotlights in your Indeed. slides. Okay. So um, at Moniza, we have a, a customer centric approach. So um, for us, our role is to make the uh, life of our, of our users more easier and more effortless. So um, we let our users um, choose for them, them, themselves which channel they will uh, use to access the Moniza world. So they're not, um, okay, yes, we have a Moniza app, but if they want to use their uh, bank app to see uh, the balance of their voucher, it's possible. So we are integrated in uh, the KBC, the CBC, the Belfius, the Payconic, and the John app. So users can check their uh, balance and transactions in all these apps. Um, with Payconic, uh, we are uh, able, uh, our users are able to pay uh, with Moniza in the Payconic app. So it offers uh, more local merchants for them. And uh, it will be also some, uh, uh, no, so it's John, sorry. I'm, I'm switching the two. Now it's possible to pay in the John app and soon it will be possible to pay uh, with the Payconic app also. And then um, we are also working with Cake. Uh, that's a new banking app. Um, and we just started a project to, um, to include also, to integrate it also Moniza in their app. So there are great projects um, ahead and we are uh, looking at great times um, ahead. Voilà. Thank you for uh, your attention. Uh, it's, it's super interesting uh, for, as, a, as a little bit of an outsider and this is something that we will discuss in the in the questions later on but yes. we see that everybody was fighting all the banks we, and all the fintechs are fighting for this device to become your primary source of information yes and we see that you are integrating your information inside third parties and that third parties are doing that the same with you so it's unclear at which point i'm going to find the information in my uh uh, Moniz app to see how many mill vouchers that's or if I can get it through my banking app I saw Belfuse and uh, KBC on there so yes. it's uh, it's uh, the same struggle the banks are facing like how do we stay relevant with our brand and trusted app mm -hmm. it's faced now by fintechs like all of you to make sure that people still use your app so it's yeah. uh, yeah, it's, it's something I look forward to discuss with everybody later yeah. on. But mm -hmm. uh, for to to respect our timing, we have yes. two more speakers. Okay. So thank you for that, Nadej. It was a great uh, introduction. Thanks. Nice to see all the the I would say all the new uh, projects coming up. And uh, we're passing uh, the the stage on to Robert Mas from Loyal Tech. Uh, Robert, I've seen you in the, in quite some newsletters and uh, news releases over the last month. So maybe first tell us um, it's probably your slides too. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, what made the, the headlines. Uh, recently uh, from for, for Loyal Tech. Uh, hello, Tun. Thank you. Uh, so recently, uh, we had some good uh, newspaper coverage about the new product that uh, we are launching uh, because we think that the present coronavirus crisis was a, a huge economic impact. It's not just not that we think, but every everybody can see it. Uh, and we decided to issue a kind of special prepaid card that can be used to help uh, with economic recovery. Uh, okay, I will wow. present the, the challenges that the situation creates for everyone uh, and in my presentation maybe a bit more about the specific uh, solution. So okay, we look forward to those slides. <laughs> okay. So if you share your screen, I guess that's yes. what you're doing now. I will let you know. Yes, we see your screen in full mode. So go ahead. It's a perfect okay. presentation. <laughs> so let me just. Okay. 
Uh, so, so we first, see loyal tech pain of it. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, very quickly about us. So here it's a, a solution that we developed with two fintech companies, uh, loyal tech and pain of it. Uh, and loyal tech and pain of it are specialized in card based electronic payments. So we cover the full value chain of card based electronic payments uh, from terminals to cards and e commerce. Okay. But here, Let's go to alternative payments in coronavirus crisis. Um, here, it's a bit an economic graph. Uh, I, I'm not sure that everyone's accustomed with this, but it, it shows the, the link between offer and demand for economic activity. And we can see here that if the, the situation before the virus was the, the green lines, after the virus, we would have the red lines and everybody can see that definitely if it might not have an impact on the pricing of goods and services, definitely the, the activity, the, the volume of activity would be much more reduced going from A to B. Today, to try to avoid <laughs> this impact, um, all public authorities all over Europe also, uh, citizens, a bit everyone, is trying to put in place uh, different kind of solutions to help mitigate the impact of, of this crisis. Um, mitigation options might impact both offer and demand. What do we mean by offer and demand for people who are not accustomed to economic terms? Offer. So I really like you put up this slide because it's been 25 years since I haven't seen Adam Smith. <laughs> and finally, I see it in real life in a webinar. I could never have imagined this was going to happen the, from the dull <laughs> economic books to the real life situation. So it's real. You're welcome. I'm happy to make Thank you, you for that refreshing our uh, academic uh, backgrounds. <laughs> <laughs> so for, to sustain offer, offer is the economic activity by enterprises. Uh, governments have put in place many things like, um, well, uh, money being sent, uh, re reduction in taxes and, and different things to try to help prevent those companies to go bankrupt. But if we only help companies not to go bankrupt immediately, the problem is that if they don't have customers, uh, they don't have sales, it will not help them in the long run. So we must make sure that they do not go bankrupt immediately, but also that they get enough mm -hmm. sales and revenues from their economic activity. That's why uh, governments and public authorities are also trying to increase and to help demand. Demand is the fact that people would go to the shops, the restaurants, uh, any kind of enterprise and buy things, goods and services. And here we will focus on the different solutions to help demand. Uh, and we hope that if everyone can help to put in place those solutions, we would go from B to C. So, well, from A to C instead of A to B. What are the solutions to help demand? Uh, one thing that we hear quite a lot in the press those last weeks is called helicopter money. Uh, yes. Why is it called helicopter money? Uh, it's pretty easy. It's because it's like if you send money out of a helicopter. So you distribute money to people, maybe everyone, maybe some people that have been more impacted uh, by the crisis. But then you try also to, to give this money and you hope that it will be used to, to spend in local shops and economy to help both the people receiving this money and the people who we will, we will receive this money as payment. It's, it's what economists call quantitative uh, easing, but that's such a hard term that helicopter money is much easier to understand. <laughs> <Yes>. and, <laughs> so uh, we launched uh, the, we launched uh, we launched a poll to know if people would be interested from an economic side to to see that sort of helicopter boost offering. Uh, so please uh, answer our polls for those who are acquainted with the concept and if you think this is a good measure or if this would be overshooting at this point in time. So go ahead, Robert, and sorry for my interruption. Okay. Um, so for helicopter money, 
actually to dis to distribute this money because when a government has decided or, or a city or region has decided to give money that's the first decision then the next decision okay how would we do that there are several solutions on the left we have the two uh I would say standard solution exists for a long time. First one is easy. The public authority would send money by check or wire transfer to people. Um, it's exactly what uh, the president of the United States did with this check, which is uh, uh, a special check of uh, $1,200 uh, to, to help people directly. Uh, well, it's now let's not forget that was government money from all Americans, but he wanted his name on the check. And for that reason, the printing was delayed. And so it just exactly. shows how some politicians <laughs> consider the helicopter to be theirs uh, and fueled with their money or in, in an uh, election campaign money. Uh, it's an interesting uh, evolution that we saw happening there. Definitely. Um, well, it's something that uh, the president would probably like because you know that he, he likes things that exist for a long time, like uh, the wheel, a wall, uh, and a check is something <laughs> which he can understand. So that's great. It has those pros, but there are also some cons. Uh, the problem with a check or wire transfer is that you give money, but then it's not specific. It can be kept, it can be saved, it can be uh, spent abroad. Uh, so, okay, when it's done on a national basis, especially in a big country like the US, you can think that every money being given would be in the end spent nationally. But in a smaller country like Belgium, and, and we've heard how much money would be used on, on e-commerce, foreign e-commerce in Belgium, that would not be a solution for Belgium. Another solution which is used is paper voucher, which is something that instead of receiving the money and then spending the money, you receive a voucher. You use this voucher in some shops. Then the shops must collect all those vouchers, send them back to the, to the public authority having issued them. And when those vouchers have been collected, then the merchant would be paid. So it's uh, very specific in the use you can make with them because you can define where those vouchers might be used, when they might be used, they can be an expiry date, but it's not really flexible afterwards. It's quite time consuming on the logistical side. Uh, and well, these are some, some cons. Uh, also a paper voucher by definition is non-reloadable when you decide that there is this amount of money, if afterwards you want to add some money, exactly like what the US is now trying to do, is to make another one. They can't reload a check or reload a paper voucher. And, and then, I'll interrupt you one second because in the check, in the we have a great chat going on here, and Jorge Ramirez says that he actually got this U.S. helicopter money as a wire transfer, but then a letter to confirm with the president's signature that they've sent him the money. So uh, apparently, they do manage to do wire transfer too. Well, the check was fine, but definitely the goal is the same: is that you send money one amount, and then you cannot control how this money would be used or when. Yes. So. Yeah. Uh, on the right side, you have the, the more innovative solutions to distribute money. Uh, one example is a payment card, because a payment card might be restricted. You can define how long it's valid, when it can be spent, how it can be spent, could it allow ATM withdrawals, uh, could it allow online spending, and so on. So it's pretty flexible in the way you would be able to use it, and also when you would be able to use it, for how long. Um, these are the advantages of a card. Also, it's reloadable. Um, the cons of a card is that it must be used on a payment terminal. So it's very fine for bigger enterprises, bigger shops, uh, but not all shops do have a payment terminal. So that might be an inconvenience when you're trying to help small players. A last possibility, which is quite similar to a card, is a QR code-based payment system. Uh, QR code-based means that 
uh, it's more flexible. You have to accept it through a smartphone or a tablet, for example, because payment terminals today cannot scan a QR code, um, which is good for smaller, smaller players, but might be more complex for bigger players who do not want their employees to accept payments through their own smartphone, of course. So both card and QR codes are nice solutions, but it depends a little bit on the type of merchant that should accept them. These are the solutions for helicopter money. And here are a few real world example, examples. Uh, so we have the, the US check, stimulus check. Uh, but I, I just wanted to illustrate with two Belgian initiatives. Uh, one on, on is from uh, a, a Wallon um, city, which is Cine, uh, which will be giving money directly to each citizen. Um, wow. Another solution is... What's the amount the that they are giving to each citizen? So it's money that citizens get, the residents have to spend in their commune of Cine, right? Right, and only okay. there. Uh, and, and what's and the amount? Do you have an idea about that? The amount 30 euros. 30 euro for each resident, okay. Yes. Um, on the right, you have, uh, uh, well, a newspaper article uh, from um, a city near Antwerp, uh, Schilde, mm -hmm. and they are doing a bit the same. They are doing, they are giving 10 euros per citizen. Okay. Um, and here you can, well, <laughs> you can see in the article for people not reading Dutch that it does have a big impact for merchants, not because of the amount, because the amount is small, it's 10 euros per citizen, so it's, it's very small. Uh, but it's important for them because people talk about it. Uh, it means that people receiving this amount would go to the shops to spend it. Yeah. Uh, when you have 10 euros, Good. of course, you will spend more than 10 euros. So it creates, even if the amount is small, it creates a bigger economic impact than just what the amount would have done by itself. And, and you can read that the impact on, on the merchants is huge because here the, the merchant says that if they have to go and hug the, the people responsible for this at the municipality, they would do it immediately. Okay, wow. And another version, a bit more specific about the helicopter money, it's uh, what we call helicopter bonus. Um, the idea is that the, the public money would not be the only source of funding for this. Uh, the idea is that the citizen would fund himself with his own money uh, and then will receive a bonus from the public uh, authority. Uh, I have a real world example. It was launched two days ago, uh, two days ago in Quebec City, Canada. Um, and it's a, a dollar solidaire. It's a, it was a, a kind of a voucher, and you got a bonus. If, if you bought a, a $20 voucher, you got a $30 uh, voucher. So you spend $20 and you receive a voucher of $30. Uh, leverage is about two. Um, we think that the idea is, is uh, well, it's a really good example of, of the solution, but the leverage here was probably a, a lot too much because uh, they were sold in something like an hour. <laughs> so the traction was, was huge to, to, to buy those, those vouchers. Um, and we got coverage in the press for our own solution for this. Uh, because as we are very active in the in the payment cards, also as payment terminals, but here it's for, for payment cards, uh, we were able to build a specific version of our payment cards exactly for this usage. Uh, and here, what's a bit specific maybe with our solution is that we were able to do something which is both a payment card bearing a QR code. And it's possible to use the card both on a payment terminal and with a smartphone. So we solve this small, big retailers issue uh, I spoke about in the beginning. Uh, okay, 
I don't want to talk too much about our specific solution, uh, but, but that's why we got a big press coverage in nearly all European uh, countries so far for this specific activity. Great, thanks. I was uh, multitasking by answering. We have to, to Matiri who says that it, uh, the city of Cine has budgeted 900,000 for this uh, for this boost. Mm -hmm. uh, and earlier on, uh, we had uh, Theodora Galliarotis who said that yeah, it's a uh, quantitative easing is reserved for institutional recipients, and so the, the 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 helicopter money is a result of that of it going to those institutions and uh, uh, being used, and he's referring to the universal basic income or citizens dividend uh, as another way to distribute uh, 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 money to, to citizens and residents without uh, uh, justification or um, effort that goes straight against that. So thanks for all those who responded uh, in the chat. Keep uh, keep doing that. Um, thank you very much, Robert, for this uh, interesting and innovative uh, product that you've uh, enlightened us with. And uh, we will move on. Uh, to uh, Bernard, who will tell us about JOIN. So that's, a, uh, as you will see in the next slides, written in J-O-Y-N. Uh, and uh, they've, they've already come quite a while too. Uh, they were one of our uh, uh, Belgian uh, fintechs uh, that uh, get covered a lot in the news too. So Bernard, I would say, if you can pull up your uh, slides and explanation, we will move to you as a last speaker. And then we want to try uh, to keep enough time to uh, to answer the some of the questions that came up already in the in the chat sessions. Thanks. So we see your slides you, and we're going full view slides? now. Perfect. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, great. So um, I should have discussed with, with Robert a bit because I'm going to, to share some, some, some common, common topics. So the first, first uh, quick introduction about, about Join. So Join is a, is a loyalty company. Uh, so we do issue uh, uh, either paper cards uh, with a QR code or uh, mobile apps. Uh, in uh, where you can you can scan in approximately 8,000 shops in Belgium, mainly local shops. So we don't uh, we don't do the big chains. Uh, we have approximately two million users in Belgium, which is relatively significant, and uh, we have uh, a bit less than three million scans, uh, meaning a transaction happening via our system per month. So um, and uh, so we are loyalty players. So is is that is that really uh, really a fintech? Uh, I, I don't know, but I, I will list and you will see in my presentation. There are four topics that do create a direct link. First, loyalty is a way to is a way to to pay actually directly or indirectly. It's a way to pay. Then you have the uh, the gift in cities. We uh, I will come back to that. That will connect to uh, to a previous uh, previous presentation. Then also we do integrate just like. Like Moniz said, uh, we do integrate with um, uh, payment systems in general because Join is is an open environment. Uh, and uh, I will I will uh, end with a couple of circular projects that we that we are testing now in different uh, different regions. So don't hesitate to raise to raise questions. So uh, yeah, so the, the 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 loyalty system is is relatively large. So I'm not going to describe what is a loyalty system. You all know that. But uh, one big difference, one major difference between join and a standard uh, standard system, is that uh, at join you you register to join. That means that you don't register to the you also register to the local commerce, but you also register to join. That means that join is a real community. So for those who do uh, who do remember, uh, so join is coming from it's a spin-off from Mobile Viking. So Mobile Viking used to be one of the the the, the, the most uh, successful community uh, bo um, uh, built in Belgium, and uh, by Frank Becker. So uh, join is a bit in the same. It was, same it was around uh, telecom, right? So that was yes. the, the alternative telecom provider, uh, a virtual one uh, at starts and uh, yeah so yes we we know the the success story of uh, uh of Frank, they have yeah. shown from Linda. yeah yeah absolutely. and uh, so the spirit is a bit the same that means that we are we are gathering people that are interested into local economy and we bring them into contact with local shops so yeah uh, obviously the 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 covid has had uh, some very big impacts on the on the on the local mm -hmm. uh, uh, local shops and for now uh, i will not be very 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 positive because all the impacts that we did notice were pretty negative 
So the uh, uh, that means that we we've seen a drop, and still today, uh, we see that the activity dropped by 35 to 40 percent. Uh, versus and that's what retail was. activity. Yeah, that's typically retail where activity. consumers use a consumer loyalty card, and that's where we have to uh, position this. Absolutely, absolutely, and yeah. all type of of local retail. Uh, it could be a hairdresser, but it could be um, uh, it could be a standard shop. It could be a restaurant. It could be I mean everything that is uh, that is populating into into um, into our city so but what the impact of covid uh, and i'm coming back to the previous presentation uh, we got a lot a lot of requests from cities raising questions about what the hell could we do for in order to support these uh, these people and then i will add a couple of figures like very small cities also launched initiative like we don't have to go to uh, to canada uh, 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 a Bertri, so very small city in southern part of Belgium, uh, launched an initiative where the people could buy uh, sort of the, the, a, a type of gift uh, uh, for specific commerce, and then the city was giving them 12.5 euro per 100 euro paid. So uh, they did yeah. that with their own means, but that means that you uh, you do not need to be big and to have a very important means to. Uh, uh, to do that, uh, to launch that kind that kind of initiative. Of course, it is short term, but it helps in terms of cash. It helps certainly the the uh, the commerce. So, okay, the, I'll, I'll add on that because we, we this is a webinar and we wanted to be interactive. And I want to thank Martin de Kramer. He's giving another uh, helicopter <laughs> bonus for the city of Werwick. They yeah. gave a bonus that cost them seventy thousand, but it generated uh, four hundred thousand euro uh, that was sold through that. So. Yeah, the the multiple the multipliers are much bigger even than the times two that we saw uh, given before. So very interesting numbers. Thank you for that, Martin. Yeah, and, and go, and, go and, ahead, Bernard. Yeah, and Ma Martin has a, a huge expertise in terms of uh, working with cities, and we are collaborating on a on a daily basis with him. And uh, he, he is launching uh, together with us a couple of initiatives in cities like Knock, and so so that there are a lot of cities that are about to launch to launch that kind of uh, uh, one-time campaigns, but they try to build something over the long term. I'll come back on that. Yeah. Uh, really? So that that's this slide is is maybe a bit a bit uh, theoretical, but what I, the message that we would like that I would like to deliver is that uh, there was a big shock for all local commerce and uh, in a way it was it was a bit necessary because a lot were were really suffering but I mean no no real reaction uh, versus uh, a world that is really changing so uh, yeah the, on that that slide you see that yeah e even Delvo opened opened the shop after 199 years uh, an online shop so that's uh, for a local commerce I mean when you talk about marketing or you talk about uh, online shopping I mean until recently uh, it was like no no that sorry that that is not for me for most of them so the uh, that was really a, a wake a wake up call uh and uh yeah obviously no they all they are all forced to to uh, to do online um, uh, online activities and to to allow online reservations and that kind that kind of stuff so they they've been really really forced forced by that so that's it's obviously negative that this crisis but it was absolutely necessary for the for the local commerce to uh, to get that that uh, that wake up call and i like to that that question so who led the digital transformation of your company so when the, the people do answer yeah ceo cto or covid-19 yes. yeah it's yeah that that makes me I, makes me laugh but for the local commerce it's extremely true it is extremely true unfortunately yes. What what is uh, what is happening now in the in this this real world is that I mean, who benefited from that that crisis? No. Certainly not the Belgian economy. Um, that that is a pity, but that's something that we we will have to handle in the in the relatively relatively short term, and we all hope that that the local commerce will will uh, embrace that uh, uh, that opportunity they are about so we're asking this question now in the poll sorry to interrupt you do you shop more local due to the corona crisis so keep uh, sending in your answers there so we can learn at the end how many of the 60 plus people that still are in this call after uh, <laughs> 53 minutes are shopping more uh, and, uh, local than they used to I'm really curious to see to see the, the the answer because I'm doing that poll on a regular basis, and actually you see that uh, there are really contradictory trends. 
Uh, on one yeah. side, uh, the people are forced to look locally. On the other side, uh, and we we did we did some tests on the two million on our two million users. So the two million users that are registered to join, uh, out of these, more than seventy percent of the people are really searching for local solutions. They are really searching, wow. and they will. Uh, uh, they are willing to do that. No, the thing is that between what they they want and what they actually do. And that's the responsibility of the users. There is a, uh, a relatively big difference. Why? So we have sixty-one percent saying they shop more local. Yeah. So, so the intention that is, are you shopping more local? So yeah. Great. So that that is that is uh, that is extremely positive, and and I hope that that will that will uh, that will uh, uh, remain remain the same way. But the thing is that there, uh, you have on the other side you have safety and convenience, and uh, yeah, we all do here. Yeah, I don't have the time to to go in all these these local shops because yeah, you know, uh, I I come back uh, after a long day long day work, and so so the convenience convenience is there. So definitely uh, gathering gathering. Um, uh, all local commerce on on online environment. I mean, there are a couple of very great great initiatives that are happening now. is a is a big trend. But if you look at what happened in Belgium, most of these yeah. initiatives in the past uh, went bankrupt, and there yeah. were a couple of I, I supported by by big money. Uh, and until recently, uh, some 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 closed uh, even during during the crisis. So um, so the, the something that is being said now is that digital transformation used to be about offering more convenience. It was all about uh, the user experience and convenience and 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 easy and making it easier. But that now purpose becomes a new uh, a new differentiator that people will not just go for convenience, but also looking for purpose and 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 yeah, put their money where their mouth is. If they say we want to shop local, to also do that online extension of that, uh, even though it might not be as convenient as it is on those uh, well-known international players' uh, platforms. Yeah, so let let will be interesting to see. Yeah. Indeed, indeed. So um, so never let, uh, let let's listen uh, listen a bit to. Uh, to Sir Winston, so never let a good crisis uh, go go to waste. So the uh, there is there is a, I, we do see a, a major opportunity because for uh, from our point of view, uh, digitalization is absolutely key for the for the local commerce, and we'll see how practically that can that can work. And now we are working together with a couple of players to integrate payment and loyalty contactless, to see you know in one action so that we we really make make users life. Uh, a bit uh, easier, but the uh, second point is, I mean, for all these local commerce, they mm. they need to understand what it means to manage a customer because they are great when you are in the store, but when you are, I, what do they do to attract you into their store? And that is that is that is a key uh, key issue for them because they 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 are just not top of mind. Um, uh, today, so that that is a, uh, and and then uh, that is where combination of loyalty system and and uh, integrate that with payment when you are in store makes makes a lot of sense. But you need to be to to uh, to start to register your users to know who are them to be compatible with legislation, but and actively communicate the day you close your shop, and you open an online store. How do you inform your customers? So uh, concrete, some concrete initiatives. So uh, loyalty and payment in one. So you heard about Peconic and Moniz, uh, but there are other or other there are other players that are that we do do integrate with. Uh, so that's to make people's life uh, a bit easier. Um, and yeah, get get that. Um, how can I put it? Uh, get that process of. Uh, measuring what uh, your users are doing and informing them about about what you do in a, in a, in a very efficient way, that is that is something that culturally the local commerce don't do, and they they will have to do a bit more. So that is so I talked a bit about about loyalty. So I talked a bit about uh, the different solutions of gift uh, that that the cities did uh, uh, did launch. Uh, I talked a bit about integration with with payment systems. And now I, I would like to to illustrate a, a project that we are testing now in uh, in Wallonia. 
uh, with the support of uh, Digital Wallonia. And we, the, the, the purpose of the project is to say that in case the, 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 the citizens do have um, uh, uh, what the city calls a good attitude, like for example, in this case, it's about uh, waste, waste management. Yeah, sorry, the, the, the slide is in, uh, uh, is in French, but it's about- uh, We understand, waste. it's fine. Yeah, it's about waste waste management. So the the there was a gamification platform launched on one side, and on the other side, there is a, a integration with the intercommunal, so that we we can see if there is an effect about the 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 gamification platform about uh, waste management and the the real um, uh, amount of uh, garbage that the people do 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 generate, and based on the evolution of that, the city saying, you know what, actually you help us to save. Money. Money, so we will give you a value that you can only use in local shops. So it's a, we we made it a bit more simple, not to to really call it a local currency, but the 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 result is uh, is approximately the same. And uh, these are the kind of initiatives that do create a virtuous circle between attitude and the behavior of the people. Instead of saying uh, to the people, you know what, if you don't do that, then you get taxes. In this case, it's, yeah, if you do help us, but in a way you get rewarded. And it's a kind of big, big loyalty for cities. So, um, okay. yeah, I, these I are- It's a big thing because somebody else is, is, is showing us that Charleroi has, has uh, also made uh, announcements for a huge uh, budget of 4 million euro to a Carolo for local purchases with 20 euro per, per, per citizen living there. So I think that uh, both you uh, and uh, Robert are onto something because you have the platforms and the tooling uh, to uh, to help cities with that. I'm uh, happy to continue. Yeah. I'm happy to discuss with, with, with Robert for sure. The, uh, the the thing is that today, the, the mo most of the, I mean, if you talk about local economy, uh, yeah. Who do you have to talk to? The merchant association, they are not powerful enough. They don't yeah. have the means. Yeah. So you need to talk to cities and, and, and communes. Uh, and they today, they just don't know what to do. It's, it's, it is that simple. So they go in all directions and they, they, they are waiting for, for, for suggestions. They are waiting, they are, they are searching for solutions. How could they get an yes. impact? So I'm not saying that this, this slide uh, is the solution, but it's, it could be one of the solutions and it will have to be monitored to see how we can incentivize in a positive way the people to, uh, and how we can influence uh, the, the, the behavior, you know, instead of always saying, you know what, if you don't do that, you get taxes or you get punished or whatsoever. Yeah. So it's, yeah. It's a super interesting. Are you at the end of the slides, or is there more to come? One one initiative that we are launching. Great. So don't don't share that one. Uh, it will it will be shared soon. You, uh, you've just so, shared it with fifty five people. That are that's yeah, stay tuned that, to the very end. So we trust you all. Don't share it. It's a secret. It, it's super <laughs> confidential. <laughs> no, I'm, what I'm what I'm saying is that with a couple of couple of partners and here that is absolutely non commercial. It's really like to open the 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 the, the yeah. debate and and get the people sense sensibilized about the topic of how important is local commerce. It makes the, 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 the city living, they pay their taxes locally, so they have a big impact yeah. on, their, on your yeah. environment. So if you start to think about that, uh, uh, yeah, then you understand that uh, from time to time it might be a bit a bit more expensive than uh, than Bol or, or than than Amazon indeed. But at the end of the day, uh, you you uh, I mean, in supporting them, you will get rewarded ten thousand. And, and your city will not have empty shopping streets, and we still have a place to all come together and unite and and uh, as as human beings and as we've been doing for hundreds of years. So uh, I think more and more consumers are taking that into account when they make a purchase decision. So. Robert and uh, Bernard, thank you very much for this uh, explanation. I was going to ask uh, Robert, uh, Lotta and Nadej to come back on stage on video. Uh, and we're going to answer some of the, the questions. I already saw one from Mark Toledo, which is addressed to you, Bernard. Would you like to create a, a joint coin? This is from <laughs> a, a cryptocurrency expert, uh, Mark Toledo. It is, uh, it is in, uh, in discussion and in, in, in evaluation. In evaluation and uh, Robert, are you also looking at that sort of um, digital uh, currencies, cryptocurrencies? Is this something that would add something to your products? Uh, cryptocurrencies, not directly, but uh, we do have a license to manage financial activities. So wow. uh, it's something that we must uh, uh, 
must be taken into consideration as well. And which because license some of those exactly programs, do you have? Is it the payment license or is it uh, uh, We do have an e-money institution license. E-money, so, okay. Yeah. Yes, regulated by the National Bank of Belgium to manage funds. Uh, and and, and, and uh, Robert is... Okay, oh, Mark is already correcting me. It's not crypto, it's blockchain. So yeah, sorry, Mark, about that one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Very good. So if yep. we look at the, the chat questions that came up earlier, um, we had one from uh, Cyril uh, Duget who, who wanted to know to know more uh, about those uh, requests to pay opportunities. Um, if you want to come online, and I will ask uh, Caroline to invite you on stage. Uh, you have a pending invitation, so normally if you accept it, you can join us. This is the first time that we're taking a live uh, initiated <laughs> chat session that was not prepared online, so bear with us to see if this all goes fine. Uh, in the meantime, while Cyril is accepting and getting ready to come on stage, uh, we will see if we have other formal questions in the question tab. Um, so, utility coin. Um, Sandra van Voren is asking about the licenses to manage these solutions. I guess it's to both Robert and Bernard. Bernard, do you need a license for the loyalty aspect of it? For the loyalty aspects, no, but uh, everything related to, to uh, digital gifts, so you need an e money license. Okay, so Cyril, maybe first uh, tell us a little bit about this concept of request to pay. Uh, yeah, so thank you for uh, inviting me to go to go on stage. It was not prepared, so I, I will do my my best. Uh, so, uh, request to pay is a new scheme uh, set by the uh, EPC. Uh, the, it is a body who has already created the SEPA direct debit and SEPA credit transfer and instant uh, okay. payment. Uh, the idea of uh, this request to pay is to create uh, rules and uh, infrastructure so that uh, someone who wants to be paid, whether he, it is uh, a consumer or a business uh, entity or institution, is to send a request to pay uh, to, uh, to 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 someone and this person to approve directly uh, to approve directly the the settlement and payment of this uh, uh, entity which has or person. For my understanding, you consent to a payment request and then everything is settled through this new scheme that is to be analyzed. Exactly. Uh, so the, the EPC is setting the rule. EBA Clearing is is building an infrastructure uh, to support uh, such a uh, such an initiative and uh, it is very likely that behind it will be uh, the underlying, underlying uh, settlement um, a vehicle will be uh, instant payment, which has uh, the benefit of uh, uh, being uh, with no chargeback and uh, quite uh, quite cheap. Uh, the model as it is today is uh, mainly uh, built on the bank, uh, bank, bank in infrastructure. That is to say, uh, for instance, Electrabel uh, will send, uh, will manage the dispatch of request via its own bank and the payer will receive the request within their online banking. Um, the, the, the question we have at this stage is uh, the, the model uh, set by the EPC is quite open and it includes third parties which are legitimate to dispatch this request or to receive this request and to uh, be uh, the customer interface for approving this. And uh, yeah. the question to uh, Bank Contact uh, PayConnect was for me uh, really legitimate because uh, the app itself is indeed a good place to receive this request and using uh, PayConnect or Bank Contact to, uh, to settle uh, the payment uh, as well. Um, I have no uh, personally. I have no clear uh, position uh, position uh, on, on this. We are really at a stage where uh, something new is uh, is is happening. Uh, on top of that, you have payment initiation uh, as said by PSD two, uh, which comes to to, to 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 the story. So I'm really happy to have some uh, to share uh, ideas and to have uh, the okay. feeling of other. Well, you've, you've shared your email in the public chat, so people yeah. can contact you if they want to exactly. get more information not, on uh, that. Uh, I really thank you. I learned something. I was not aware that this was already so far in the in the drafting stage and upcoming. Uh, I do know that for instant payments, the banks did not really have a revenue model fully thought up or proven, and this is still something that many are struggling with. It was a huge investment. Uh, what, can you say something about that? 
uh, I can see some payments. payments. Or you can say, okay, Robert, let's uh, let's have one of our form. So, uh, Cyril, I thank you for being on stage. Keep You're joining welcome. us in the thank chat. You. We're gonna we're gonna close in a in a few minutes. So, if you have more questions, okay. do use the, the the question tab, yeah, and sure. Robert will take the instant payment. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the request to pay is very interesting, but uh, instant payment is one of the CPA schemes. Uh, instant payment, credit yes. transfer, and direct debits are the three schemes. Uh, instant payment, uh, actually, is not only for banks. Uh, I mean, we, for example, we do have our own IBAN accounts and we can do, well, it's not in production yet, but uh, fintechs can also do it. We're not the only one. Yes. Um, and with instant payments, it's true that it, it happens within a few seconds. Uh, so it's a bit too, it's not fast enough to be able to be used for a card-based payment because you you have time modes operations in, in payment terminals, but it's really a, a good way to be able to ask someone to pay you and within seconds, you would see that in your bank account. So that makes a, a big difference because for example, uh, okay, you have to buy a car and you want to see the car first, but then you won't be able to go out of, of the garage with your car without paying the merchant. And the problem is, how would you do that? And, and before you were able to use a, a certified check, but it doesn't exist anymore. And now yeah. instant payment is one solution for these kind of things. And this is just one example among many others. OK, thanks for that, Robert. We're going to use yeah. it as your closing uh, way, remark. Yeah. The, OK, the you cost, add the last one. <laughs> no, the cost for instant payment is the same as for regular payments. So the business model for it, for the banks, is just <laughs> whether they think they might be able to make more money out of it. <laughs> That's true, but it was a huge <laughs> investment on top of the payment infrastructure they already had. Probably. So for them, uh, I heard about hundreds of millions uh, to, to pull it off for large banks. Anyway, <laughs> uh, thank you for your additions. I'm, I'm going to go to our, our, our ladies to give their uh, closing comment or your call to action uh, about one of your new products. So, uh, Nadege, do you want to start and give us uh, your closing uh, comment or something uh, you want to add? Thank you, everybody, for your presence and uh, get active with our new vouchers. So. <laughs> Very good. We we got the clan day very loud and clear in there. So thanks for adding that touch, thank Nadege. Thank you very much and all the best uh, for Moniz. Thank you. So Lota, can you tell us for Pekan and Bank Contact? Uh, thank you very much for your um, interactivity and and the questions. Uh, it's really it was a very learning full session, and um, I would say keep an eye on the the action that uh, Benoit announced just before uh, to support okay. our local economy with our local solutions that are around the table today. That's a really nice uh, closing, so thanks for that. And I, I, I must say, as a as a host, it's great to see so many people working together and integrating their solutions. So I hope we have many more sessions where we can unite the Belgian fintech ecosystem in such an operational way too. So thanks, Lotta. And Bernard, you get a final closing remark or call to action. Go ahead. So thanks, thanks. Very interesting discussion. So I mean, so so many things to do, uh, and it's it's so difficult to evaluate what how how this. Uh, yeah how will the, the, the impact of this last? And uh, But I, I really believe that uh, if, if all big players, just like it is, here, it is here, do open their systems, do open their culture, and do work for the best, and stop looking at their own business alone, uh, then really we can we can help and we can drive that, uh, that, that evolution in a positive way for Belgium and, and, and other countries. So it's about uh, coll collaboration. Absolutely. Uh, fait la force. Uh, uh, <laughs> let's uh, let's use that as a closing theme. Uh, that really was what we've seen happening during this session. Uh, I will make the call uh, on on a sadder note for the next session, which will be about bankruptcies. We all know there's a huge wave uh, anticipated, uh, and we wanna we wanna get some experts and they're already arranged for that session. So next Friday, two o'clock, we'll try to keep it uh, at around one hour like we do today um, to, uh, with with experts who will explain us more how to avoid them not to wait too long when things are going sour uh, and to get help also for the entrepreneurs that need to restart and reboot themselves and their businesses in these tough times so everybody thank you for staying with us until the very end and looking forward to engage with all of you next uh, friday two o'clock bye 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 everybody